What up, Math Leaf? Whoop, whoop. All right, today, I have to find my calculator. We are doing uh, inverse functions. You're learning target is how we use inverse trig functions to find theta. So up until this point, guys, we've given you an angle, and we've had you decide what other information do we give you so that we could find a missing side length using sine, cosine, and tangent. Now the question is, is how do we use sine, cosine, and tangent to find the missing angle? We found missing side lengths, we found missing hypotenuse, but we haven't, we need to know now how to find the missing angle. And that's where the inverse sine, inverse cosine comes in. So find the angle measure from the board to the top of the tree around your answer to the nearest hundredth. Well, I want to know what this angle theta is. And we're just going to call it x. And here's what I know. This is my opposite. I always identify what I'm given, and I'm given my adjacent. And write down the ever infamous Sokotoa. Okay? Sokotoa. Which one of those uses opposite and adjacent? It's tangent right here. So we know that tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So I know that the tangent of some angle x is going to equal my opposite of 28 over my adjacent of 40. It'd be nice if I could undo that tangent and then I could find out what the angle is. Well, let's talk about that for a second. How do we undo a plus one? We minus one. How do we undo a minus one? We plus one. How do we undo times one or times three? Divide by three. How do we undo divided by three times three? See how we just do the opposite every time? Or how about this? What if I want to undo three squared? I take the square root. That cancels it out. Remember that? If you want to know how we undo a tangent, to undo a tangent, we take, it's called the arc tangent or the inverse tangent to undo a sine. Actually, I should have wrote a sine over here. We do an arc sine or what we call an inverse sine. They cancel each other out. So if I'm taking the tangent of x, the inverse tangent of that will just leave me with x. If I'm taking the sine of x, the inverse sine of that sine will just leave me with x. Cancels out. If I'm taking the inverse co cosine of the negative 1 of the cosine of x. Those cancel out and I'm just left with x. So we're going to do that over here. On this side, I'm going to take the inverse tangent. And I've got to do the same over here. The inverse tangent. And that's canceling out and I'm going to get that x equals the inverse tangent of 28 over 40. Well, let's do that on the calculator, because you're going to need to. So if you look right above tangent, you can't see that. Right above tangent says tangent to the negative 1. That's the inverse tangent. So it's second function, that. And we're going to do 28 divided by 40. We want to make sure it's in degree mode. You see mine says DEG on bottom. And look at that. We get approximately 34.99 degrees. It says to round to the nearest hundredth. So this is approximately 34.99 degrees. Now, I do want to prove that this works. Because if this works, if this is approximately 34.99 degrees, right? Then let's say I wanted to find this length right here. Let's say I didn't know it was 28, I just think it's x. Well, then I would know that the tangent of 39.4 or excuse me, 34.99 degrees should equal my opposite x over my adjacent 40, which we know x is going to equal 40 times the tangent of 34.99. Now, this isn't going to be exact because I had to round, but it should be right close to 28. So let's try this. 40 times the tangent 
27.99, which would round to 28. How about that? See, it works. Okay, let's do a couple more examples here, just so we can really get this solidified in our brains. But it's going to be the same thing over and over again, just figuring out the Sokotoa of it. Okay, so first of all, always opposite 90 degrees, the hypotenuse. And if this is my angle A, then touching it is this, so that makes it my adjacent. So I have adjacent hypotenuse, that's the co, that's the cosine. So I know that cosine of A equals, uh, was it adjacent over hypotenuse? So 13 over 20. And we all know I'm going to take the inverse cosine now to undo that cosine. So I take the inverse cosine of this side. And we're going to get that, that cross out, that cross out. A is going to be approximately, let's see, second function inverse cosine of 13 divided by 20. Approximately 49.46 degrees. Oh, it says to the nearest degree on this one. Oh. So that would be approximately 49.4, makes it say the same, so approximately 49 degrees. Look at that. Let's do one more. Okay, so we'll do an example, I believe, with sign right here. So again, across from the 90 is always the hypotenuse. And this time across from the angle B is going to be our opposite. So sine is the so, the opposite over hypotenuse. So we know that the sine of B is equal to opposite of 40 over 40, the hypotenuse of 42, so 40 over 42. And again, I know that the inverse sine is going to cancel this out, right? Boom, boom, those cancel out. And that, I have to do the same thing to both sides. So we need the inverse sine of 40 over 42. And it says to the nearest degree again. So second function inverse sine of 40 divided by 42. That is approximately 72 degrees. So B is approximately 72 degrees. Awesome. Guys, that's the lesson over and over again. Some of these are word problems. We'll probably might have to deal with those as a class, but they're going to be pictures you draw. Remember when it talks about eye level, it's talking about this, right? Where we're some distance above the ground. And so we're at eye level going up, okay? All right. With that said, <laughs> peace out.